Hey everybody, in this video I'm running another test of the Windows Mini PC that I have attached to my Celestron Nexstar 6 SE telescope. I'm going to be capturing the Monkey Head Nebula, SH2252. SH2252 is a emission nebula that's located in the constellation Orion and resides some 6,400 light years away. In addition to the hydrogen alpha emission, this nebula also has quite a bit of ultraviolet radiation caused by a star forming region. For this imaging session, I'm going to be using a dual band hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3 filter uh, since I will be imaging from my Bortle 8 backyard. I'm mostly excited to see how well my rig holds up now that I've contained everything to the mount and telescope itself. You see what I've been trying to do is to create a self-contained single rig that I can pick up and carry outside without any additional wiring, without any additional uh, hardware components, laptops, etc. And I'm hoping that this is going to make it easier for me to get up and running whenever sky conditions are right. My normal setup routine would have me going outside uh, with the telescope and wedge attached and putting those up on my shaky pier. From there, I would grab the entire wiring harness and wire everything up. I would take my laptop outside and set that up on a little bench. From there, I'd boot up my laptop, switch all the profiles over to this particular configuration since I was using my laptop for both the 6SE as well as the smaller 300 millimeter rig. From there, there'd be a little bit of calibration. All in all, I would say the whole process takes me about 30 minutes before I'm actually ready to align and focus. Now with this new setup where I have the mini PC mounted to the underside of the OTA uh, and I've got all the power adapters and power cords uh, strapped to the side with a little Ziploc container for now. I know I'm looking for a better solution, but I should be able to pick up the entire rig, carry it outside, plug in the power, and then connect wirelessly to the mini PC and be ready to go in minutes. Needless to say, I'm pretty excited to share how this is going to go. My name is Chris, and welcome to my channel. All in all, setting up the new rig with the underside mounted uh, mini PC was a breeze compared to what I used to go through. So I was able to carry everything outside all in one shot. The only uh, small issue that I had was that I usually put my hand up against the arm to lift the whole telescope. And now I found that uh, the mini PC actually gets in the way a little bit, so I have to be careful not to... Uh, hit any of the wiring, uh, the USB cables that come out of the, the mini PC. Uh, but other than that, connecting everything was incredibly easy. Because the wedge is already fixed in the right position, um, I don't have to do any drift alignment, uh, nothing like that. Having everything self-contained and only having to connect the power cable made everything else very smooth. Uh, the only thing that I haven't quite figured out is whether it's best to try to control the mount uh, with a phone, uh, which makes for a smaller screen that I've been able to do quite successfully, or do I run inside and grab my other laptop, which I have upstairs in the office I don't necessarily want to bring down. I have my second laptop that I can use, uh, that I have been using to uh, run my gear so far, uh, that I can just remote desktop out of into this new setup as well. So I'm still working out the kinks there. Uh, but in general, this went very smoothly. 
I was able to bolt down uh, the entire wedge assembly to the pier, uh, and I was up and running in minutes. Now I had a fairly clear night, which allowed for about three hours worth of data capture on the Monkey Head Nebula. In addition to the dual band data, I also collected 30 minutes of broadband using my UV IR cut filter, and that's for the purpose of getting stars. So my processing, uh, I ran everything through Deep Sky Stacker, separately stacking the UV IR cut from the dual band uh, frames. From there, I took everything into Cyril, where I did the alignment so that both images would be aligned together, and I ran a uh, star extraction using Starnet in order to remove the stars from both sets of images. I then took all of this into uh, GIMP, where I used the stars from the UV IR cut image and the nebula from the dual band image and combined them together into an image that had a great deal of detail from the uh, dual band, hydrogen alpha mostly, uh, signal, as well as uh, the much nicer looking stars from the UV IR cut. So in the combined image, you can see very vibrant, colorful stars and uh, a very bright nebula as well. And I'm quite happy with how this all turned out. Now, I have it on good authority that in the next little while, I might be getting an Optolong l Enhance quad filter. And if that happens and the skies do clear up, what I'd like to do is revisit this target with the l Enhance as well as with the Anthlia filter just to see what the difference would be between those two broadband filters and uh, what I'm getting with this dual band. So let's wait and see what happens. Well, it's been a few nights and uh, I just got a hold of a Optolong L-Quad Enhance filter. And tonight I'm gonna be trying it also against the Monkey Head Nebula. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing how this filter does compared to the narrow band, uh, dual band hydrogen alpha and oxygen three filter. Sorry about the audio quality here. I'm recording on my phone. Well, I didn't get as much time as I hoped for, but I did manage to get one hour of each of the Optolong and the Anthlia. Now, I gotta admit, I was a little bit nervous about running this test because uh, I've had all sorts of issues with the Anthlia with the ZWO ASI 294MC Pro camera. You see, this camera doesn't have a built-in UV IR cut filter, and the UV and IR uh, wavelengths that this filter, the Anthlia Quad permit through seem to really bloat stars and wash out a lot of the details of the objects that I've been imaging. So far I've only tried this filter with a couple of galaxies and a nebula and the results have been less than what I was hoping for. Now the Optolong L Enhance is also a quad filter which also uh, crosses into the UV and IR wavelengths but not as much as the Anthlia. And in none of the reviews of the Optolong did I see any mention of star bloating. 
and that gave me hope that this filter would work better. And it did. So as you can see in these images, uh, here is the Anthlia with just the stars. And one of the first things that jumps out is how the Anthlia filter scatters the light around the edges. So uh, you can see that there is this uh, pink reddish uh, shadow of stars towards the outer edges of the image. Uh, now towards the center, the stars are uh, bloated compared to the Optolong. Uh, they get better towards the center, but they're also a little bit washed out. So the color uh, intensity is not there. Neither is there as much color intensity in the nebula. So here's the nebula without the stars. And you can see that, uh, well, this is the level of detail that you see within one hour. Now switching over to uh, the Optolong and looking at the stars, you can immediately see that the stars are uh, have a much better shape to them. Uh, the stretching around the edges, that's the normal lensing I get with this telescope. Uh, I don't get any uh, fragmentation of, of the light being split into uh, different frequencies. You don't get that same effect. Uh, and the brightness and, and the color is so much nicer. Uh, same goes for the nebula itself. So if we remove the stars from this image, you can see that there is much more detail to the nebula as well. The colors are a little bit more vibrant, uh, and the nebula stands out more against the background. The processing I did to both of these images is similar. It wasn't exactly the same because the Anthlia filter gave me some issues with extracting the background in Cyril. It actually introduced some strange green patches around both sides of the image uh, where the sensor glow would have been, even though the sensor glow was removed with calibration frames. So I had to uh, first remove green noise and then background uh, in order to balance things out. But in terms of how much I actually stretched the back of the nebula itself, those stretches were done the same way for both the Anthlia and the Optolong. So this is as comparable as I can make both images. Suffice it to say, I'm quite happy with the Optolong, and I'm looking forward to using this filter in the up-and-coming galaxy season. As far as the Anthlia filter goes, I had a comment on my previous video on putting a UV IR cut filter in line with the Anthlia from Rob Observatory. Rob, thanks for your comment. Now what Rob said is that the Anthlia quad was really meant for targets that are rich in ultraviolet and infrared emissions, and that the bloating is actually a feature and not a bug. That got me to thinking. There are targets that are rich in UV and IR emissions out there, specifically things like star forming regions. So I will be revisiting the Anthlia filter with exactly those types of targets in mind. That's it for now. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, clear skies.